Hey ladies, today is Sunday, March 14th, 2021, and um, I didn't do a video last week because we were dealing with a fever with Michaela. So, oddly enough, this time last year, roughly this time last year in February of 2020 and then um, March, you know, 2021, Michaela ended up getting a random fever for a few days. So like this week, this time, it lasted for about three to four days. Um, at its highest, it was all, it was one hundred three point eight. And you know, I, we don't know what causes or what caused this fever or what caused the fever last year. So I took her to the doctor and the doctor, of course, nowadays, since COVID is so prevalent, um, any illness is really for a, a child her age and probably just in general, they first think, you know, we got to test for COVID. Now, I've personally never been tested for COVID and um, nor has my husband. So it was interesting because the first person to get tested for COVID in our family is our 20 month old so um you know that's oh and by the way Michaela's 20 months now so <laughs> um she turned 20 months on the 8th and so anyway she was the first one to get tested for COVID and um you know it's fine it was a little I guess difficult because we took her to the doctor um they tested her for COVID the flu strep a UTI and ear infections. Now there's no test for ear infections, but they did actually just check to see if she had an ear infection and she did not. Um, so all of her tests came back negative. The only thing though, is that the COVID test required putting the, um, the like swab, Q-tip type swab up her nose. And the flu test was the same. However, the COVID test goes further up than the flu test. So here we have this, you know, baby, young toddler. And I think it would be difficult on any child having this thing put up her nose. And her nose actually bled. So, yeah, that was a little concerning. And when I asked, is that normal? They said, oh, it's because her nose is possibly sensitive. She did sneeze a little bit occasionally. Um, but nothing consistent, and she had a little cough occasionally. But again, maybe a handful of coughs over the course of a couple of days. Um, and, but she did have a runny nose. And so my understanding, not sneezing, but coughing, diarrhea, vomiting, runny nose, um, fever, shortness of breath, all of those could be COVID symptoms. Now, she didn't have all of those. She didn't have shortness, shortness of breath or diarrhea um, at that time or vomiting at all. Um, but again, we went through a similar thing last year, and last year was in February 2020, so it was right before COVID became a household you know, word. And um, they did not test her for that, of course. They also, she was only, I think she was like seven, eight months old at that time. And they didn't test her for um, flu either, although it could have been a flu. I recall they did the UTI test because that required them to put a bag on her um, externally for her to urinate in. And so they just put it in on under her diaper and when she urinated, it, would, it went into the bag and then they tested that. Um, the problem is, this could take a long time because there's no telling how long it would take your child to urinate. And so um, each time we've had to do this, it took hours for whatever reason. Um, because I find that when Michaela has these fevers, she chooses not to drink, which is horrible because fe a high fever can make you dehydrated. And you know, you need to get fluids in. And so it's always forcing her to drink as much as possible because she goes on like a drinking strike for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, like I said, all of her tests came back negative. So it was really, we still don't know the cause of it. I asked her doctor, could it just be a cold? Um, but you know, 
for some reason, they never say, oh, she probably just has a cold. It's just kind of like, let's see all these other things that she could have. Um, I do think maybe this time was a cold. When it came, when it happened last year, she didn't have any sneezing or runny nose or coughing, even a little bit. And so um, I just chalked it up to teething. Although her doctor said that t that fever was too high for teething, you know, I don't know what it could have been. So when it was this year, I just assumed, you know, when they came back and they didn't have a cause again, I'm saying could it be teething? She has almost all of her teeth now except for um, her second molars and I think third molars. I think they get third molars. So, yeah, she doesn't have those. But she has all of her, you know, first molars and all of her front teeth. So, um, but I did read that around 20 months, they can start getting their second molars. So I was thinking maybe it could, could have been that. Um, again, I don't, I don't know. She isn't cutting them yet. So I haven't actually, as far as them breaking through, but that doesn't mean that they're not coming, you know, that they're not moving up in her gum line. And maybe that created this. It's kind of nerve wracking to not have a cause, um, but it's very similar to last year. And so the way that we treated this was that we um, just gave her Tylenol and Motrin. And when I say and, I mean and and not or, we do a combination where, you know, when you start it, you can start them at the same time. So hypothetically, if you're starting to give it to your child at, you know, 12 o'clock, you can give a dose of Tylenol and a dose of Motrin at 12 o'clock, but then you give each one according to um, the direction. So Motrin, you can give every six hours. So of course, you wouldn't give that again until six o'clock, but then um, Tylenol, you can give every four hours. And so it's just important to make sure that you space the Tylenol every four hours and the Motrin every six hours. And so, um, I think that's that's the the most important part but you can give both which I think people aren't always clear on um, our doctor told us that last year that we could do both and I thought that worked a lot because a Motrin I, my understanding is is, is is stronger than the Tylenol but um, for a high fever they you can give both because they're two different medications and so there's no risk as long as you use them as directed every four hours and every six hours there's no risk of like over medicating so we did that we tried to get her to eat as much as she she um would she she had a okay appetite sometimes she was eating and then sometimes she wouldn't eat so you know it was hit or miss and then um drinking was the hardest part but when she started drinking again it was a sign that to me that she was starting to feel better but it was weird because it was like a roller coaster of course the, her, her temperature would go up and down constantly like it would start of course it started high but as the medication would start to work and it would go down she would be super active and trying to play and I'm trying to keep her kind of like you know from just running all over the place and trying to get her to no rest um but that wasn't always what she wanted to do so that was kind of you know where last year she was you know she wasn't walking and she was really just she was a baby right so she wasn't really she was just really starting to crawl and um and so it wasn't really as hard to keep her you know keep her put but this year it was like okay she didn't want to be you know confined or any of that she wanted to kind of play and do her own thing and you know so it was times throughout this when she was you know in super high spirits but then there were other times where she the, the fever would come back and she would be you know cranky and crying and things like that so um definitely a stressful time of course when your child is sick and you you don't know what what is causing it but I think um and I say you don't know what to do but really all you can do is I think even if it was a flu or COVID, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, I mean, it wasn't those things, but I don't think it would have mattered as far as the treatment because we probably would have just been doing the same thing, giving her Tylenol and trying to get the fluids in her and getting her to eat as much as um, we could. And that's really it. Like she, she drank some Pedialyte and then she started rejecting the Pedialyte. She didn't want to drink anything. Um, 
And so that was, like I said, that was a little, um, you know, nerve wracking because they, they can get, you can't get um, dehydrated due to a high fever. But ultimately we were able to get her to drink um, some and then like the little sips would, they add up. So you kind of just keep trying. Um, some people say try popsicles or I tried Jello. She wouldn't eat the Jello. Um, but if your child will try like Pedialyte popsicles or something or juice, it really didn't matter to us as long as she was drinking. But, um, you know, she was, she's not into cold things like that. So the popsicle she doesn't really take to. Um, and I mean, that was really it is just trying to stay the course until the till the fever breaks. Her doctor did mention that if it did not break um by so she had a fever for about four days and she said if it lasted for a fifth day to bring her in and then they were gonna run more tests but on blood work, take take some blood and try to do some blood work on her to see what could be the cause of the illness. Um, luckily by the fifth day it went away, but it did take you know, that long. Be, and, and she didn't have a fever consistently during this time. It was up and down. As a matter of fact, um, by the third day, she, the fever, it was, it was really low, all, you know, it was, was really low in the morning, like 100.8, which is a really slight fever because it's not a fever um, for children under two until 100 point, uh, until it's over 100.4. And then that went away because I gave her Motrin. I didn't even give her Tylenol that day. And I gave her Motrin, I think, um, twice that day. But I gave her Motrin and it went away. And then she didn't have a fever for the rest of the day, like on her own. But then I, um, but then I didn't give her the Motrin. And then the next morning she woke up and it was back to 102. But throughout the day, I had been testing her. So that led me to wonder, do you give them medication on the schedule even if they don't have a fever because I stopped giving her the Motrin and Tylenol because she was not showing a fever for like, you know, 16 hours or more. And so I didn't want to just give her the medication because she was starting to be resistant to taking it. And um, so I was thinking to myself like, oh, you know, should I continue to try to, you know, give it to her and force her to take it, or since she's not running a fever, do I not give it to her? And I asked her doctor about this, and she did say, if there's no fever, don't give it to her. But, of course, when I didn't give it to her, um, after an extended period of time, she woke up the next morning, she had fever 102. Um, I gave her, of course, both um, Tylenol and Motrin because she hadn't been on any medication, and she was fine for the rest of the day. Like, fever didn't come back. I did give her Tylenol and Motrin another dose on the four to six hours after, but she cried and fought taking the medication. I wasn't sure if the medication was maybe making her stomach upset or if she just was just tired of taking it because I'm sure it's not the best tasting stuff. But um, whatever it was, uh, I ended up giving her another dose and then I didn't give her any more. And then thankfully that was you know, a week ago now and she the fever hasn't come back. But... You know, not knowing is just, um, you know, but I, maybe it was just a cold. No one, no one says that anymore. It can't just be a cold nowadays, you know, it's like, is it, a, it's something worse in her case, all of the things you would think of were negative, but the fact that the doctor was like, okay, if it doesn't go away, we have to start doing blood tests, um, was again, still nerve wracking. But like I said, um, it did go away, thankfully. And so we've been fine, but I'm hoping these random phantom fevers, um, don't continue to happen. Like next year I'm dealing with it again. I'm hoping I'm like, is this around the same time, you know? So I'm like next year, early in the year, are we going to do this again? I don't know. Well, you know, I me, mean, I know how to deal with them, even though I'm always going to take her to a doctor because the fever gets up to you know, close to 104, so which is a high fever. And her doctor was saying it was too high to ignore. The interesting thing was that they asked whether she had diarrhea and she did not. But of course, that day after bringing her home from the doctor, um, she ended up having really bad diarrhea, which is interesting. And of course, it only lasted that day. The next day she was fine. Um, but she had diarrhea. Well, it was kind of just one diarrhea diaper, but it was a lot. 
Um, it was like an explosive diarrhea diaper. Um, but again, after that, there was no more diarrhea. And, um, you know, but again, that's another reason why you need to keep them hydrated. So, yeah. And that's really similar to what happened last year. We brought her home from the doctor and she had diarrhea that same day. And then again, nothing after, nothing before as far as diarrhea. So I'm not, I'm trying to keep, you know, a, a log of what's going on, but I'm still not sure what causes it. I'm, I try to either chalk it up to either t- teething or a cold because from my understanding, Teething can cause diarrhea and can cause a fever. But, um, you know, her doctor keeps saying those temperatures are too high for it to be um, teething. So I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but, um, you know, thankfully it's gone. It's over. So that's how we manage um, her fevers for both a baby and, um, and a toddler. Now, if your child is under six months, you can't give them Motrin. So I think Motrin starts at six months, but, um, you know, of course, if your child has a fever that high, you should just go to the doctor or call the doctor. Um, but you can't give Motrin is my understanding for a child that's under six months. So it would just be Tylenol. But anyway, uh, yeah, so thankfully that's over and, um, just wanted to, you know, update on how I manage her fevers when they happen and hopefully they don't happen anytime soon but other than that she's never been sick so um you know anyway ladies um i will talk to you soon stay safe